All set. All right. Um, I would like to call the virtual planning board meeting for Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. To order, please, at 7.02 p.m. No, 7 o'clock p.m. on the dot. Um, Karen, could you call the roll, please? Tim Callahan? Here. Bob Doherty? Here. Ben Donovan? Here. Dave Edmonds is absent. Carolyn Turner? Here. Mike Ventresca? Here. Chair Claudia Bogan? Here. So I see there are no subdivision approval not required plans, so we'll go straight to public hearings. Uh, zoning amendment to amend section 26.2 which are the applicability provisions of the solar photovoltaic system section and section 5.1 paren 87 table of use regulations of the Woburn zoning ordinance to allow roof mounted solar energy systems by right in the OS zoning district. And this is a sponsored amendment by city council president Con Cannon per request of mayor Galvin. All right, so who do we have to speak on that public hearing today? I will uh, assume responsibility for that, uh, Madam Chairman. So back in 2016, the city adopted Section 26, the solar ordinance you just cited, um, in response to a state law, which says that a community should not, or shall not uh, prohibit nor unreasonably regulate this type of installation. And we went through an exhaustive discussion and rezoning to add the section that addressed both ground mounted and roof mounted solar. At the time, unfortunately, we didn't envision that there would be a need for it in the OS district because that's our open space district. Well, you don't readily think of buildings. Excuse me, just one moment. But as it turns out, there is at least one parcel uh, that is the uh, Horn Pond, where there are buildings, including our water treatment facility. And the city is putting an addition on that building now to house additional equipment to address the issue of PFAS in the drinking water supply and making sure that we can continue to meet state guidelines. They'd love to put solar on the roof of that, which would be fantastic for not only the environmental reasons, but obviously for the ratepayer and the Woburn taxpayer but we need to uh, amend the zoning to permit that to happen. So these amendments are being proposed to allow them uh, roof mounted that is by right in the OS that will facilitate the city putting them on that parcel. As we were drafting this ordinance uh, amendment, uh, we noted that there was also uh, a, a conflict in the existing language for ground mounted. So when it's appropriate and I make my recommendation, I will specifically include a provision or a, a revision that would address that existing uh, typographical error, if you will. Uh, well, it's more than a typo. It's a conflict. And it'll address that in addition to allowing it in the OS district. Okay. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there any in attendance that would like to speak on this zoning amendment? All right, um, with respect to any questions that any planning board member has for Tina, um, now would be a great time to do it. And then I'll ask again for public participation at the end of questions. Anybody with any questions or comments on Tina's presentation? Madam Mike. Chair? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Um, to the chair to Tina, um, I, I apologize, I didn't go through this you know, at all to with a fine tooth tone or if that matter. So um when when I see open space and I see Hong Pond, I, I just get worried, obviously, for is this gonna be limited to the um uh, pump house? No, it would be allowed on any building in the OS district, but it's only the roof mounted. Ground mounted would not be permitted in the OS, but roof mounted could be allowed. So if there's there's various wells throughout the conservation area, so they could conceivably put solar panels on those on those little pump houses. Is that correct? 
I don't know. I, I don't know my, I mean, certainly from a zoning perspective, I, I would say conceivably, but whether it would make sense to put a sing, you know, I don't know how big those pump houses are, what there's, you know, if there's a minimum number of panels to make it worthwhile. I don't know enough about the installations to know whether it might be practical. Okay. All right. But, but I think theoretically the way this would work is it would be allowed on any building in an OS district as it is now <laughs> in every other zoning district. So could they could they actually put a building just for the purpose of putting panels on there? Or the building have to have uh, like a defined use? Uh, well, the, well I, so they could the city build a building that had nothing in it but just solar panels on the roof? I yeah, I think I suppose they could. I don't know how I don't know how likely that is to happen. Yeah. No. I just my I guess my fear is that it would I mean, I, I love walking down there and all that, and I just hate to see them. I mean, I like solar, but in in certain locations, they're practical, and other places, they're more of an eyesore. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as long as you're comfortable with it as is mended, I, and I will be as well. Mike, are you good? I'm good, Claudia. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have, else have, else have any questions for Tina? Um. I was just reading through the um, the information, the actual letter from uh, Mayor Galvin to the city council. He, he says, please note that a GIS survey performed by the engineering department shows that the only buildings in the OS district are in fact municipal buildings and two buildings owned by the Woburn Golf and Ski Authority. So if, what we're doing is saying, okay, installing roof mounted solar energy systems on buildings located in the OS zoning district, essentially we're regulating the city, the city regulating the city. I'm just trying to understand <laughs> to be sure I get it. Tina's laughing, but that's the bottom line, isn't it? It is. And in fact, I'm, I'm smiling because it gets, it, that gets even more pronounced if you looked at the ground mounted section of section 26 it actually allows ground mounted by right in most cases except if it's on municipal property it must get a special permit so we actually regulate through the city council municipal ground mounted but privately owned ground mounted can be allowed by right so yes there's a there's a couple of interesting head scratchers in this ordinance okay but but with regard to its main import, its main import is to simply allow a roof mounted system on this municipal building that they're building that there's a question as to if they stuck it on there under the current language, whether that would be OK or not. OK, I mean, as, as long as I have that right, that this seems like a relatively minor change. So. We think it is OK. All right. Does anyone have any follow on questions from all of that? All right. I, I hear none. This is a public hearing. I want to be uh, very careful to give anyone in the audience who wants to speak either for or against the zoning amendment to use the raised hand function to let me know that you'd like to speak. And Tina will now explain what that is. So if you hover your uh, cursor over the bottom of your screen, you'll see a um, reactions button. And if you click on that, you'll see the raised hand feature and click on it and we'll know that you would like to address the board. And I'm looking at our list of participants here. And although we have a guest, uh, they have not raised their hand. So there are no comments. All right. So we have an open public hearing that I opened at 7 p.m. or so today. It is currently open. So um, if, the planning board uh, members would like to move this matter today then or tonight, then the first motion would be a motion to close the public hearing. I will make that motion to close the public hearing. All right, motion by Bob. Is there a second? Second. Second by Carolyn. Is there any further discussion on the motion to close the public hearing? Hearing none, I would ask for a roll call vote 
on the motion to close. Jim Callahan. Aye. Bob Darty. Aye. Kevin Donovan. Aye. Carolyn Turner. Aye. Mike Ventresca. Aye. Chair Claudia Bolgan. Aye. That is six in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed. Um, Tina, do you have a recommendation? Yes, I recommend that the planning board uh, recommend to the city council that they adopt the order as proposed with uh, the addition of this further amendment to address the disconnect, as I mentioned earlier, that exists in the existing ordinance. We would add the phrase, uh, we would add reference specifically to the IP, IP2, IG, OP, and OP3 zoning districts as the districts where ground-mounted solar energy systems would be allowed uh, upon the issuance of a special permit. Those are the only ones that are intended and are included in 5.1. And so by amending section 26.2 to add them, it will be specific and they will um, no longer conflict. This, that's, that's the recommendation. All right, does anyone have questions about Tina's recommendation? All right, hearing motion. none. Oh, I'd motion entertain a motion. The director's recommendation. All right, motion by Bob to accept the planning board director's recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Second by Carolyn. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I would ask for a roll call vote on the motion, please. Jim Callahan. Aye. Bob Darty. Aye. Kevin Donovan. Aye. Dave Edmonds. Oh, absent, sorry. Carolyn Turner. Aye. Mike Pantresca. Aye. Chair Claudia Bolgan. Aye. That's six in favor, none opposed. That motion carries. So that is to send a favorable recommendation to the city council on that um, zoning amendment. All right. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is discussion, Woburn Loop Bikeway slash Greenway Overlay District. Tina, is that yes. you again? So um, a month or a month and a half ago, the members will recall that you considered and made a recommendation on a couple of amendments to this overlay district um, that were being proposed by a developer who hoped to build multifamily housing. And although this ordinance has been in place for, I think, the better part of a couple of decades now, uh, adopted in 2003, so it's 20-year anniversary, it has never been used. And so if this um, property owner does follow through with development, it will be the first one under the loop overlay district. When we were discussing the amendments, the question came um, as to why no one had chosen to use that ordinance before to redevelop. And it was, um, you know, two decades prior. So we thought about maybe if there are amendments that this developer saw were necessary in order to facilitate development, might there be other amendments that perhaps need to be made? Should we take a look, a fresh look at the ordinance to see that it still does what the city wants and intended? Um, and does it effectively, does it need to be revised? I suppose to maybe even the boundaries of the overlay district. Do you wanna change them, propose something else? Are they appropriate? A couple of years ago, we had talked about going to the city council to talk to them about the overlay district. There was a developer on Green Street that actually proposed a brand new district called the Railroad Overlay District, very similar in many ways to the Woburn Loop Bikeway. But they weren't using the Woburn Loop Bikeway. They actually rezoned it to another overlay district entirely. And at the time, I remember the planning board had uh, approached the city council and wanted to have a discussion about maybe the real big picture of the, the, the whole area, um, which really runs um, between Main Street through Green Street. I wonder, Karen, um, I know this is an imposition and I can take the minutes, but Karen would have the ability, uh, if we gave her a minute, to be able to pull up um, a map of the zoning just to show you and people at home who might be watching what area we were talking about. 
but it's an industrial area largely, an older industrial area um, that may be ripe for redevelopment. Like so many other days, you see it there in blue. Great job, Karen, mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, that part there. Okay. On the blue hash. So um, it came up a couple of, about a month and a half ago. And we thought, well, maybe when we get a few minutes, maybe over time, we should start the discussion and maybe take a look at that ordinance, see what it says, and have you know maybe uh, a couple conversations about whether it still makes sense in its present form or some other. All right, thank you for bringing this up. I remember, I remember thinking about that during that um, developer's presentation, asking the question, why? we put this effort together back in 2003 at this point and nobody has ever used that ordinance it seemed it seemed like that was a, a ripe subject for a planning board to revisit what planning was done 20 years ago that we thought would result in redevelopment of that area but we were um mistaken um i would think I mean, we used to have the the Zork committee, right? The Zoning Ordinance Review Committee that um, had city council participation. My understanding is that that is not um, currently, um, you know, a, a live matter. So it's a it's a plan. It's a just us sort of arrangement. And I would get I would ask Tina if if we knew, like, in the next few months what our agendas looked like, whether there was um, a light agenda that we could put this sort of more of a, you know, proactive, you know, planning discussion together for. Um, do you see something in the next, you know, few months that looks like an agenda that really is light that we could, you know, otherwise not meet on current business, but we could use that time to, you know, look at this more proactively instead of reactively. That's a great question. And, and it brings a couple of things to mind. Uh, certainly in your November is going to be busy. We'll, um, I can flash forward a little, little bit. We're going to cover this in a minute. <clears throat> we've got a public hearing scheduled on the 14th for the Pool Street definitive. There's a several uh, completion date construction completion dates that need to be discussed and they're not easy discussions, some of them. And then, um, you know, the meeting on the 28th right now, we have a, another um, definitive that just came in last week that we were gonna tee up for the 14th. So long story, there may be time at, one of, at the December meeting, we have one scheduled for December 12th, but it, it would either be that or your first meeting in January it might be a great opportunity to have this discussion, but also give me time to do a little bit more research and homework to maybe come up with some information that will facilitate that discussion. Um, you know, a more detailed map of what what parcels are there and what businesses are there. Um, perhaps get a little bit of information on, to your point about the purpose of the bikeway greenway was to create a bikeway along the train tracks. And that has not occurred, but there were some steps taken 20 and 10 years ago on that. And there are steps that were taken as recently as last year that would eventually have this as a phase for a bike path. So we could gather some information on that in the next month and a half or so, and then give that to the board in advance of the discussion to help us sort of facilitate what we, you know, might accomplish. Mm -hmm. I guess I would be reluctant to put it on on a December meeting as December generally is a busy time for folks. And this really demands, you know, you know, us us sitting and 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 thinking about it, you know, with with our thinking caps on. So I would I would respond really well to perhaps one of the meetings in January if, you know, other board members thought that that was a reasonable time frame, because one of the things that I would like to know in in the research is, um, I mean, it would be interesting to go back to some of the minutes of those meetings and figure out, well, what was the point of this? I mean, I generally and vaguely remember that the point of it was to um, um, help turn that part of the city into sort of a, a higher use, not that industrial is, 
you know, any sort of, you know, not to mean it in a pejorative way, but to more intensively use the property and to, and to, and to encourage sort of that, that sort of bike way um, improvement. And, and you're right that either because the bikeway was never actually improved or that, or just the, the changes that we made weren't um, enough of an incentive for anybody to incur whatever detriments there would be to developing this area that wasn't sufficient. So I guess that's sort of the two pronged approach. Like, can we, can we do anything as a planning board to encourage the building of the bikeway? And if that is not, where our efforts are best put, um, can we do something in the zoning to encourage a redevelopment of the area with 20 years of hindsight as to you know what we did in the past, maybe not having the effect that we were hoping for. So there's kind of two parts to that. And that would result, that would that would basically involve in knowing, well, where is the bikeway development situation now, right? Like what's right. going on? What yeah. it, what if anything as a planning board can we do to encourage that? Um, and then sort of a forensic analysis. Like the second thing is sort of a forensic analysis of well, what we were what were we trying to do twenty years ago? And to you know why didn't it work? Um, which is I think a question I asked Joe Tarby and he couldn't really answer that all that well. It's not his place, obviously. It's our place to figure out our own planning, but. You know, I, that's still a question I have. Right. Why not? Well, and, and Madam Chair. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yeah. I recall, and every, seems like every five to 10 years, this always comes up, this whole bikeway, and everybody, you know, they, <laughs> we get funding for a grant that does a presentation, and that's always as far as it goes. And it seems to always die because there's no money for it, there's, there's no funding. Well, we've we've identified, Mike, and you're right, it has not always been the case, but boy, things have really changed in the last five years or so. There's now dedicated funding, and we have found a source, um, and I'm sorry I can't bring it to mind readily, but we used it and have been very successful getting hundreds of thousands of dollars at a, at a clip. Let me get some information for you on that. It's integral, actually, to the point Claudia made. Because I, as I mentioned, this overall plan for a, a bikeway would run literally from here all the way to North Woburn in three phases. That will take some time to get yeah. to. But um, let me get some information on that. You're right. I, I think it's been a, a change in the attitude in the last 10 years and particularly the last five. Obviously, we've gotten a lot more smarter environmentally. When you think about the Woburn Loop, it was the TOD of its day. Right, transit oriented development. You had a bus line. You were trying to create a bikeway so people could maybe get somewhere downtown without having to get in a car. And I think that's why they were encouraging the multifamily townhouses and that type of development in the overlay, figuring that the, you know then there'd be the mass of people and users to make it work. So, you know, let me. I uh, will be getting info on that source and others. But I, I do. I am encouraged that there are a lot more funding opportunities now for bikeways than there used to be. And, and to get back to what Claudia was suggesting as far as, you know, maybe a, a, a general time frame to kind of just put on our planning hats and, and not to react, but to be proactive. I, I, I like that idea. And, I, you know, it's something we, we should pursue and, and, and maybe get, you know, again, when we had Zork, we had involvement from, not only city council, but I believe, you know, there were some local businessmen that were kind of involved as well that had interest as well. So that's, you know, I, basically, I, I, I totally agree with Claudia. I think it's something, you know, we've got to spend some some time on down the road. Thank you. Great. Great. Well, I mean, business sort of ebbs and flows. And sometimes when business ebbs, we take that opportunity, you know, not to have meetings and you know, when something like this comes up, it's sort of a reminder that, well, we're, all, we, you know, we, we process requests, but we also have this separate function and, you know, having something like this circle back to us, you know, 20 years later in 
and and we we realized wow we spent a lot of time on this 20 years ago and tried to make something happen and and it and it didn't work you know let's figure out why not and let's see what we can do to try again um and not not give up on it so to speak so tina thanks for bringing that up on our meeting agenda i think that's a that's a good way of of uh you know utilizing our resources as a planning board excellent all right so after that so so just to just to close that loop if we if we see this again on our you know one of our january meetings where you know we have some time to think about it you know hopefully you know folks will will approach it with you know their thinking caps on when we get more information of, about you know what happened and what we have to work with okay so if people are good with that we can move on to planning board director update uh, yes, just briefly, uh, it's a recap of a uh, summary that on at your next meeting on the 14th, it will be, I believe, an, an in-person, we called it, because we have the public hearing on the 43 Pool Street definitive, and we also received uh, late last week a one-lot subdivision extension of Marcy Street. Uh, that will be, have a public hearing on the 14th, and there are expired construction completion date discussions for Sherman Terrace. Carlson Way and Crossman Road subdivisions. And then we will also talk about a potential uh, board meeting dates for next year. And just to let you know that the next two meetings after that, after November 14th is November 28th and December 12th. Okay. So November 14th, 28th and December 12th, which will get us through 2023. Correct. Okay, wonderful. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions for the planning board director on her update? Okay. All right. Let me. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Yes. Perfect. All right. So we have on to approval of minutes for the October 10th, 2023 meeting. I'd like to make a motion to accept the Tuesday, October 10th, planning board minutes with the noted correction of adding Mike Van Tresca to the people who are actually in attendance. Yeah, Mike, unfortunately, somehow you got erased. You're he, he's erased now. Oh my <laughs> goodness. That's, that's quite okay. That's fine. So we just well, muted you also. <laughs> <laughs> but you know but he but but the motions that you made are in here that's funny isn't it like, ah. yeah so it's 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 the the discussion that that you engaged in is in here so so i think i think um karen it's just in the the first part here yeah, yeah. i just wanted to see if he read the draft minutes and if he uh, <laughs> <laughs> i guess he didn't <laughs> I was busy. I was too busy being a grandfather. I'm sorry. I know. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. And packing my bags for my little excursions. Oh, yeah. I can imagine that that would be an issue. So, so uh, with that noted change, there was a motion by Bob to approve the minutes of the October 10th, 2023 meeting with the um, addition of Mr. Ventresca as an attendee. Is there a second? second all right it's second by kevin is there any further discussion hearing none i would ask for a roll call vote on the motion please jim callahan aye bob darty aye kevin donovan aye carolyn turner aye mike ventresca aye and chair claddy bogan aye that is six in favor none opposed that motion carries all right, are there any other business matters that may legally come before the board not known at the time of posting? Not from staff. All right, so then we would be, uh, and I would be interested in a motion to adjourn at or about 7.29 p.m. I will make that motion to adjourn the virtual October 24th, 2023 planning board meeting at 7.29. All right, motion by Bob, is there a second? Second. Second by Carolyn. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I would ask for a roll call vote, please. Jim Callahan? Aye. Bob Darty? Aye. Kevin Donovan? Aye. 
Carolyn Turner. Aye. Mike Fentresca. Aye. And Chair Claudia Bogan. Aye. That is uh, six in favor, none opposed. That motion carries. Thank you very much for um, attending today. And Tina and Karen, thanks for preparing another, yet another well-prepared meeting. So thank you all. And we will see each other on November 14th in City Hall at 7 o'clock p.m. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.